This time on Cobweb Garage, we try and start our bob for the very first time. But first, a bit of monkeying around. Before I start this puppy up, I want to get the throttle connected for obvious reasons, but I can't run it through the loop because I wouldn't then be able to lift the loop up and down like that. So I need to basically go underneath. Now the way around that I thought of is to, to get a 90 degree angle adapter on the carburetor for the cable. And they do actually make one, they'll auto make one. And that is your normal cable adjuster part which is screw straight into the carburetor. And what they do is they, you get a 90 degree angle. So then the adjuster then screws into the 90 degree angle. Now that's all well and good, but I stupidly assumed that the 90 degree angle would screw straight into the carburetor, but it doesn't. And the issue I've got is the thread on the standard adjuster is about five mil but the thread on the 90 degree angle is actually six mil. So I'm gonna to have to drill this out and tap it to accept the new thread. So let's take this carburetor back off again. Just gonna pop the carburetor in the vise, hold it. Obviously to tap a six mil hole, you need to drill out the hole to start with for the right size drill bit. And I looked on the internet and for a six mil tap, you need a five or a 5.2 mil drill bit. As you know, people, this is the first time I've done a lot of these jobs uh, working on the scooter and Next thing I have to do is tap a hole in the car brayer. Never done that before. I nipped along to the local machine mart and picked myself up a set of Clark tap and dies. Now this has actually got metric and imperial. Now I was quite keen for the imperial because when I come to work on the Zephyr, which is just over there, of course I'll probably need some imperial. But anyway, let's have a look. Let's get this open. Feels like Christmas at the moment. Quite exciting. Now, I'm not sure the quality, I, I looked on the internet the quality of the different makes. Some were carbon steel, some were tungsten steel. Uh, tungsten steel generally better, um, you know, the internet said. So yeah, this Clark's one is a tungsten steel set. Uh, so far, Quite impressed by the case. There she is. I think this is the handle for the tap. We have imperial ones over here. These are the metric. Yeah, that's the M6 there. And I'm guessing that somehow screws in there. Okay, I think she's going now. From looking at a YouTube video, you need to just edge the tap back because the, the metal collects in the, in the grooves of the tap. Oh, there you go, and it's gone all the way through to the other side. Sees her back out. So the proof is in the pudding. You have the 90 degree adapter here. Let's see if that's gonna screw in, okay. Okay, let's get this carburetor back on. And now you can see the point of this is that the throw cable here is gonna come underneath the loop and go up into the 90 degree bend. So you may have noticed in the footage I've had this sort of blue towel here just to uh, protect the loop from bashing against the frame here. Obviously you need something a bit more permanent. Uh, you need some basically rubber on here so you don't have metal touching metal when the loop comes down. And I mean, I'll probably buy some sort of neoprene rubber or something at some point, but for now, I've just cut a piece of uh, an old tire actually which I'm gonna mount on the frame and that'll just uh, keep things sort of isolated a bit there. I've done some more drilling and tapping. Use an M5 tap here to tap into the frame itself. So 
Don't need to use riv nuts or anything this time. It's quite a sort of chunky piece of frame, so it should hold plenty. So there's the rubber stop there. And basically that is gonna land right underneath this reinforced part. So uh, before I go too far and try and fire the thing up, I just wanna go around and torque up all the nuts and bolts because I basically snapped this thing together pretty quickly. Um, I'm gonna start at the front with these fork link bolt nuts. Uh, I'm just gonna put a dab, I'm not sure if you're supposed to or not, but put a dab of this blue thread lock on here. And looking on the internet, uh, it's saying tighten these to 40, there goes one, uh, saying tighten these to 40 pounds. So, set my torque wrench there to 40. get this loop lock on with a tight fit. So I had a bit of a fail with this lock. Basically, I was trying to bend this part so it fitted underneath like the catch. Uh, and I kept bending it, bending it, and basically it's broken something's broken anyway. Uh, it's just not really up to the job. So, and I need something adjustable really to get the right depth to, to latch on behind here. To be honest, I don't think it was ever gonna be up for the job riding down the road, trying to keep the loop there. So I'm gonna order a new lock. I found something online, much more heavy duty. So we can forget that. I'm still waiting for the roll of outer cable to arrive. So I can't get on with that. So in the meantime, I'm gonna carry on bolting stuff on the scoot. And I think I would like to put the rear light on next. Now, I did have an old rear light uh, body, if you like, but it's been welded and hacked a lot already. Uh, and also, I didn't have any lens or any internals, electrics or anything with it. So I tried to find a complete second-hand unit, couldn't, so in the end, I ordered one from Bead Speed. Now, I ordered a primed one. They were obviously out of stock, uh, and then without even asking me, they just sent me this polished one. Yeah, not really in keeping with, uh, with the, the theme of the scooter. So, um, I am going to attempt, I've never done this before, to turn a polished finish into a, uh, yeah, an aged finish somehow. So. Let's um, attack it with some, I don't know, sandpaper, wire wall, and then maybe spray something on it. Don't know, to age it. Anyone got any tips on that? Comment below. Anyway, first of all, let's take this thing apart so we can uh, attack the metal. If you look at the old one, it's kind of quite sort of pitted. 
and uh, yeah that gnarly wire brush in the grinder kind of got that pit in so that's pretty cool quite pleased with that but it's just still way too shiny so uh, I think we're gonna have to make up a, a concoction and uh, yeah we'll let it uh, try and age the thing a bit quicker start off with some vinegar everyone knows salt is no good for metal right soy sauce now that's looking good but i think it needs one more thing something really corrosive yep that should just about do it okay i think i'm gonna leave it there <laughs> my back light my special concoction juice didn't seem to do anything, age it. Um, so, I'm gonna have a look at that in a second. You know what, not even that worked. So, I decided to fit the light as it was. And in fact, standing back and having a look, yeah, didn't look too bad in the end. Quite like that finish. A little bit of a fail on the loop itself. Come with me and I'll show you. The loop lifts up fine with no HT lead connected to the spark plug. However, when you put the HT lead on, it hits. Basically what I'm gonna have to do, I think, is take a little bit more out of the loop which, to be honest, is not a bad thing anyway, because I can put a nice curve on there. So while I'm waiting for that paint to dry on the loop over there, I thought I might attempt to fit up the new Speedo. I've got a unit, I think it's from an LD, not too sure, but this one doesn't have electrics, you know, for a bulb or anything. I didn't want to run an extra electric cable for a bulb. Um, so that's the one I've gone for. I've got the new, I'm not sure what they call these either, wormy thing that goes in the forks there, Speedo Drive. Um, and I've got a new cable. Uh, and I'm thinking about mounting this Speedo up here. I can make quite a simple bracket off of the handlebar bracket here. So I think that'd be pretty neat, look pretty good up there. So yeah, uh, first of all, I'm gonna run the cable down through the forks and see if we can get that hooked up. I actually realized the old front brake cable is kind of long enough. So I've run that down. I mean, I've just run it down here for now. And yeah, connected it up. It is a little bit tight. So I've just run it down the outside for now, but I just want to get some brakes going. Here comes the speedo cable just poking through there. We're gonna run that down through under the mud guard. When we got together, I fell right under your Just give that some grease as it goes down. And 
that should be it for that end. So I'm thinking a simple bracket from here across to there and then you can just screw up the cable underneath there. We've taken some measurements for the bracket. Here you can see there's a couple of 8mm holes, a couple of 5mm holes needed, roughly 40mm by 52mm. I've just drawn out to scale on a piece of paper uh, and here's my bit of steel. So I'm going to put that on there, punch some holes so I know where to drill them. Four holes drilled out, just need to trim the bracket out. I just want to test fit the speedo, which fits in there, uh, and I'm just going to have to do a little cut around where the cable connects into. There it is, rounded off the edges, Make it look a bit nicer, just got a bolt into there, just need a couple of spaces in there just to clear the bolt heads. Let's give this a coat of paint before screwing it on. Loop has been touched up with paint, let's get it back on the scooter. Here we have that extra cut out bit and a spark plug, but will it work? Check this out. I mean, that is a win. I'm so pleased about that. So you don't have to take the HT lead off now every time you open the loop. I'm just waiting for the paint on the little speedo bracket to dry. I'm also waiting for the outer cables to arrive. They still haven't arrived, so I can't start fitting up all the cables, unfortunately. But I want to crack on with this build, just get it done. There's one thing you probably notice is missing, um, which is the seat, of course. So here it is. Bun, 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 bun. Apart from the, uh, the color, obviously, yeah, I love it. So I've fairly thin to keep this low ride in position um, and the other thing about it is it's going to not only cover up the old fuel filler cap and uh, air intake um, it's also going to cover up where I'm going to put the loop handle at the back there so yeah quite pleased with that. I've made a couple of butyl rubber sort of gaskets if you like just to go just to stop metal on metal I made those out of just an old inner tube so I'm going to put those on as well uh, yeah let's get this thing bolted on there's a little design fault here these are the bolts that came with the seat, so you'd expect that to work, wouldn't you? But look what happens when you try and bring this seat down. Hopefully you can see that. Basically, the two nuts hit, and the seat won't go down further than that. Can you see that? That is just crazy. So I'm gonna have to replace these bolts with some roofing or coach bolts etc. So not only have I had to use a roofing bolt but I've even had to cut a third of it off. I mean this is absolutely ridiculous but not only did I have to trim these roofing bolts down I even had to trim the seat nut down a bit. 
this notch in the seat post, which is way too high. So the seat was sat up off the loop. So I've cut another one there for now. What I'll probably do is weld up the original hole at some point, but anyway, I've had enough. And now it finally sits down. That was way more work than it should have been, but I've got it on there. We've mounted the speedo on the bracket I made. I put a couple of spaces there so we can still get to these bolts. But there it is, ready to go back on. Like in the bracket. But unfortunately folks, we do have another fail. The speedo cable seems to have a different thread to the actual speedo itself. So I've tried and tried, but I just can't, this just won't do up. I'm wondering whether the Speedo came from India and the cable, I brought it in the UK, but I'm just wondering whether there's something I should know about there, that they use different thread sizes. So it looks like the Speedo I'm quite happy with, uh, maybe I need a new cable, perhaps someone could help me out in the comments there, let me know what's going on. You know what, I think it's about time we should see if this thing is going to start. I need some motivation to get this thing finished off and I think firing up would just be the motivation I need. So I have got some petrol. It is E10, premium unleaded petrol. Do not put E5 in your old Lambretta, vintage classical car, etc. I have also got some two-stroke oil. I have connected up throttle cable, just the old one for now, because the new outer cable still haven't arrived, but I've just put the old cable back on the throttle here which is a bit stiff, but it is working. So we're just gonna whip this existing spark plug out. Bear in mind, everyone, I have never seen this scooter running. Hopefully you can see that on there. Let's see if we got spark. Yeah, boy. Yeah, there is a spark there. Okay, we'll pop that back in. Pop this up for a second. So there we got our two stroke oil, the right mixture for, got half a litre of petrol there. Just gonna put this, mix this up before it goes in. I'm gonna pour this petrol in slowly and watch for leaks. Hopefully there won't be any. Okay, we got our first leak. I'm gonna switch the petrol tap on now and let's just see if this is gonna fill up. And it is. So we have petrol getting to the carburetor and it's not leaking as far as I can tell. We have a spark. Genuinely is the first time I've tried to start this scooter. I've no idea, I've never seen it run or anything. It's a bit of a pain because the throttle's not on the handlebar, but let's just see if it'll at least fire off.
Now that is about it for this episode of Cobweb Garage, but I, I don't know if you noticed in the footage, the seat still just wasn't fitting properly. So I didn't film it, but I came out here and basically I had to do away with the catch completely. Uh, and I also had to trim down the, the rubber feet that the seat has like halfway down because that both the mount and these rubber feet were kicking it up. So apparently this seat is meant for both series one, two and series three. But yeah, maybe it fits a series three better than it does a series two. Anyway, I'll show you what I do, did quickly. So I, I did away with the latch completely and I just basically put a bolt down through the seat and uh, bolted it down tight. The other thing I did as well, I wanna paint the panels and put those on next. And after fitting a panel up, uh, I realized it was actually hitting the exhaust there. So believe it or not, I've had to chop that exhaust in two places and actually sort of tilt it down a bit and uh, redo the bracket here. So yeah, that, that was quite a bit of work just to get that exhaust right. Anyway, that's enough for that. Thank you very much. Um, I want to just also give a big shout out to uh, Paul, who, who is in Finland, and uh, he's got a little article in uh, the Lambrea Club of Great Britain's uh, magazine, Jet Set. Um, and you can actually see Paul there in Finland wearing a Cobweb Garage t-shirt. So uh, thank you very much for that, Paul. And uh, yeah, we do have these t-shirts for sale and we ship those worldwide. So they've already gone to, yeah, obviously Finland, Germany, Norway, the USA, um, just all over the place really. So yeah, uh, I'll put the link below. Yeah, that helps uh, support our channel. Um, thank you very much for the love. Um, if you wanna subscribe, please hit the subscribe button um, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Cobweb Garage and we'll see you next time. Now I'm just thinking, should we just try and start this one more time? I've actually hooked up a throttle now, so.